Good morning. <clears throat> Thank you, Shelley. You have a great sense of timing and, and, uh, and beauty. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yes. So welcome to DeSoto United Methodist Church on this beautiful, beautiful day that God has given us. And um, I don't know about you, but I feel like a new woman with just that extra hour. Even if I didn't really sleep an extra hour, I just feel like I got it, you know. So amen to that. A uh, special welcome to any guests who are attending. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask anyone or see me later on. Um, let's take this time to remember to turn off all the electronic devices. I know I just got a customer call about two minutes ago. Prayer request cards are in the pew pockets. Feel free to fill one out and place in the offering plate if you have a prayer that needs to be attended to. Quick announcements. Bible Explorers meet today from 4 to 5.30. Third, fourth, and fifth graders and friends are invited to explore the Bible together and enjoy a light meal. Thanks to all who rolled out in the less than ideal weather to make Trunk and Treat a success. We had a good turnout, and I really enjoyed seeing the kids in costume, particularly the six-year-old girl who was dressed as Willie Nelson. <laughs> I thought that was the best. Election Day dinner is this coming Tuesday. It's from 5.30 to 7 p.m. It's all you can eat, $12.50 for adults, $6 for kids, with a cap of $35 for young families. Take a flyer outside in the Narthex, Share an invite, bring a friend, and enjoy the community connection and the homemade pie. Um, I would appreciate some help setting up four rows of three tables each and eight chairs to a table downstairs after the service if anybody is available to help us get ready for Election Day dinner. And if anyone is up for putting up two large banners in the church yard, please let me know. And uh, last but not least in my announcements, uh, in fact, very importantly, uh, you are all invited to share refreshments in the Narthex after the service to honor Pastor, Pastor Kim for Pastor Appreciation Month. We have a small gift and some notes of appreciation to share with him. And you still have time and resources out there if you want to give him a note um, for, to show your appreciation. And Eric has an announcement. Good morning, everyone. Um, just a quick reminder that next week is Commitment Sunday for the, for the ongoing capital campaign. So we're really encouraging a really good turnout. You know, those who are watching online, if you can, you can come for one week, it would be great to have as many people as we can to share in fellowship and the blessing of the commitments as we, as we start our capital campaign. Um, we've already got some commitments that have come in, and uh, we're very excited about the journey ahead. So please join us next week. The potluck is going to be, we'll take care of refreshments from the church side, but no assigned dish to anyone, but bring something to pass. Um, we're going to, we're really going like old school potluck. So bring something that's delicious. And uh, after service, we'll all meet downstairs for fellowship and we'll, we'll kick off the capital campaign with, uh, with some great food and fellowship. So thank you. Thank you, Shelley and Eric. Um, Welcome to DeSoto United Methodist Church. I'm, my name is Pastor Young Jae Kim. I'm so glad and amazed by you. In this beautiful fall weather, you didn't go on a picnic or watch TV for the game, <laughs> Chiefs. No. Yeah, you beat the game and then uh, weather, right? You came to church to worship God. So please turn to your neighbor, say, I'm so proud of you. So proud of you. Yeah. Yeah. And um, safely, uh, Carl came back safely. So, yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> have you back safely. And then we have two guests, friends of uh, Shelly, all the way from Texas, right? Please welcome them. Melanie, Melanie and Kathleen. 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 Okay. Okay. No, welcome. Yeah. You have a very good friend. She's a very good friend of us too. Okay. Now, um, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> Shelly will lead us to yeah confess our faith. Let's let's read together the Apostles' Creed as uh, 
printed in the bulletin. And let's stand to say the Apostles' Creed, please. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our opening hymn is in the inset, I'll Fly Away. to invite you to pray for the peace in Israel. Maybe you watch the news and it's getting worse and worse. So please pray for them. And then no more expansion of the war. So many casualties. It's so sad right now. And then those in our prayer list in the bulletin, please pray for them as well. And please pray for our elderly members and next generations at the same time. So Shelley will lead us to pray. Let's read together the prayer of the people. Our good Father, thank you for your love and grace that saved us and made us holy. Thank you for all those gone before us who showed us love and faith so we can follow. We praise you with them in one voice. Help us to do our best to be a better disciples of Jesus in our race on this pilgrim journey with our brothers and sisters until we join our heavenly siblings to praise you. Give us wisdom, courage, and strength so we can follow your way every day. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen.
Almighty God, thank you for giving us life through Jesus Christ, whom we all share as our Lord in heaven and on earth. Thank you for all those who taught us about Jesus, our Savior, and the way of life and truth. Many of them are resting and praising in your presence. Help us run our, our race faithfully like they did until we all will meet again. Father, there are so many people who have been suffering in the land of Israel. Please prevent the war from getting bigger and stop the conflict as soon as possible. But at the same time, Lord, as we hear all the tragic news about people and nature, we remember the signs that Jesus told us. Help us run our race of pilgrim, pilgrimage faithfully in this time, so that we all are not ashamed but grateful when we face Christ, the judge in person. We also pray for those whose names are on our prayer list, those in our thoughts, and those we are not aware of. Heal those who are suffering from pains, illnesses, and in injuries. Strengthen those who are struggling with mental health issues. Hold the caregivers in your strong hands. Open doors to those who are starting a new beginning in their lives. Send them good people, and provide those in need with what they need. As our town is growing and changing, please keep us all safe. Mold our church to be better disciples as we welcome our new neighbors with open arms and hospitality of Christ. Send us to our friends, family, and neighbors as your hands and feet for changing lives, transforming communities by reaching, welcoming, and engaging. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, the light of the world, and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us praise our Lord through hymn number 328, Surely the Presence of the Lord. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on its face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Amen. Sabrina. It's good to see you this morning. So what is something that we celebrate around this time of year? We just celebrated it earlier, like last week. <laughs> Halloween, that's right. And the, what, and the day after Halloween, we celebrate something. Does anybody know? What? Well, Thanksgiving is coming, but it's not the very next day. Day of the Dead, and in the church, we celebrate All Saints Day, All Saints Day. And since this Sunday is closest to All Saints Day, today is All Saints Sunday. Now, who, what are we celebrating today? Saints, saints, yes, that's right, we're celebrating the saints. Let's listen to our scripture this morning, which will give us a little bit more of a clue, and then we'll talk more about the saints. Today's scripture is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 1. So then, with endurance, 
let's also run the race that is laid out in front of us, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us. Let's throw off any extra baggage, get rid of the sin that trips us up. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. All right. So in our scripture, we heard that we have this great cloud of witnesses. And that's talking about the communion of saints that we, that we proclaimed in the Apostles' Creed. It's all the people that have shown us how to follow Jesus how to live the way Jesus wants us to live. And that communion of saints includes us, too. We're saints, too, because we are living the way Jesus wants us to live, and we're showing others how to live the way Jesus would have us live and how to follow Jesus. So when we talk about All Saints Day today, we're talking about all of the people who are the ancestors of our faith, like Abraham and Moses and Mary and all of these people. And we're talking about all the people in our own lives and in our church who have lived before us and shown us how to read the Bible and to serve others and to love others. So think in your mind of those people in your life. Maybe it's teachers. Maybe it's grandparents. Maybe it's parents who have and who are showing you how to follow Jesus. These are the saints, right? And because we have all of these saints who are cheering us on, even when it gets hard, we can keep going. We can keep doing the things that Jesus would have us do. We can keep loving people even when it's hard, and we can keep sharing even when it doesn't feel like we want to. We can keep doing all those things, right? Yes. Okay. So let's pray today to give thanks for the saints and to ask, so to ask God to keep helping us to live as saints too. All right. All right. We'll pray an echo prayer. Will you pray with me? All right. Dear God, thank you for the lives of people that have helped us follow you faithfully. Thank you for calling us to be saints and follow you each day. Amen. 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 All right, friends, let's stand and sing our song. Responsibility is never stop praying for the next generations. Okay, please. Now, Shelly Coker will dedicate the special music, give thanks to God on behalf of all of us.
This picture was taken, um, I took this picture one morning last week. It was beautiful sunrise. And when I saw this, you know, the, the sky with the, this cloud, you know, that reminded me of the, um, the great, a great cloud of witnesses you know, today we, share, we are sharing. They lived on earth like us and went through many things like us and then kept their faith. Now they join a um, great cloud of witnesses in heaven. And one day, we will join them too, yeah, without any exception. If we, if we keep our faith, right, then we, we will able, we'll be able to join. So yeah, this is very um, important uh, race that we need to uh, run. So we're going to talk about this race today. Let us pray. Almighty God, your word is perfect and your grace is amazing, but your servant is not. So inspire me with the Holy Spirit and open our hearts and minds here and now to be with us so that we can understand your will through your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer, in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Today's passage begins with therefore, right? Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Therefore, so uh, when people, the writers of the Bible, um, wrote the Bible, there was no chapters or verses. Okay? It was just one big, uh, long letter and then. Um, later, it was divided for us to, you know, look it up easily. So, he was saying, the, the writer of the Hebrews was saying something beforehand, and then he was saying, therefore, right? And then the, the chapter before this chapter was chapter 11, which we know, well-known chapter that uh, is known as a chapter of faith. And then he uh, mentions all the you know all kinds of people in faith in the Old Testament, like Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, right, Rahab, David, Samuel, the prophets, and so on. And he said, I cannot mention all of them. And they all gathered uh, this great cloud of witnesses. And um, after the Bible was written. Throughout the church history, many more added to that cloud, witnesses. Then, I really hope we all can see together one day, right? without any single exception, all of us. Amen? Amen. Yeah, and the picture of the great cloud of witnesses reminds us of John's vision in Revelation. And it says, after this I looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. This list of people in faith has continued. And then um, in, in America, people of faith moved to America and then they went through all kinds of hardships, but they passed down their faith to their next generations and next generations. And some of them settled down in the Soto area, in this area, they settled, um, they established a Methodist church 18, in 1858. And they built the church building and, um, and this is the third building they built. And we have our own list of people in faith in our lives. Maybe it's your parents or uncle or grandma, grand grandpa. You can name it. And they ran their own race. Now the race has become legacies. They did their best. Even though their life was not easy at all, they tried their best. And now what they did their races became the legacies so that we can learn and follow. Now, learning from the, their legacies, we run our own 
race, you know, we have to run our own race every day in faith. How? The scripture says the first one we need to do is throw off. Throw off things first. It says, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Throw off everything that hinders. In the Greek Bible, it says about um, okos, which means a weight, burden, encumbrance. So something that can burdening, you know, can you imagine the athlete is wearing all kinds of heavy equipment and then try to run? Other than your, um, you know, football player, you have to be free, right, to run the race. Even though the football player, they need, they need equipment, what they need. They don't need a spear or, you know, hammer or something like that. They need a, a ball, right? So they have to um, take off and, and throw off every useless weight and burdens to run their race properly. In this world, by the way, there are so many things. There are so many things trying to draw our attention and then uh, bother us you know, uh, as we are walking our pilgrim uh, journey. We, we need to prioritize what, we, what will last forever. You know, what we are busy about is not always the best thing right, in our lives. So we have to prioritize if that is necessary for our souls here and now. We cannot afford to carry all the useless thoughts and things in our lives and the sin as well that hinder us from running our race of pilgrimage. So let us throw them off and then run this race together with together. And then he says, and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, which means this race is not easy at all. This is not a piece of cake. This race of faith will not be easy. Sometimes it's, it's going to be very hard. But those who come before us, they endured and persevered. You know, they tolerated all kinds of hardships in their lives, keeping their faith. Even they didn't mind at all, you know, being persecuted to keep their faith. Now the race has a goal. What is our goal? What is our goal? Yeah. The Bible says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Jesus is our goal to reach. And um, he says he's a pioneer and perfecter in an Greek Bible, you know, the translation was like, uh, the definition of the, those terms are like originator, author, and founder. Jesus is the founder and originator and author of our faith, and he is also a perfecter and completer and finisher. So he is the reason that we have faith, and he is the one who will perfect our faith. So he is the one who, whom we need to focus. We have to keep eyes, eyes, our eyes on Jesus, and not something else. We remember the good example of Peter when he was walking, tried to walk on the water, right? When he was walking toward Jesus, looking at him, he was okay on the, walking on the water. But you know, when he was watching the wind and the waves, he began to sink. So we have to focus on our eyes on Jesus. What if an athlete, athlete runs the race to the wrong goals, wrong way? Do you know him? Jim Marshall? Okay. Uh, on October 25th, 1964, the Minnesota Vikings was playing against the San Francisco 49ers. I don't know why they call it 49ers, but um, anyhow, they were playing each other. The Vikings was leading 27 to 17 in the fourth quarter, 
And the game seemed in the bag, and it was, you know, soon they're going to win. Especially when uh, the 40, 49ers uh, coughed up the ball, and he, they, he dropped the ball, and then uh, the big uh, Marshall, Jim Marshall, a uh, six foot four, four, four inches, and a 20, 260 pound um, defender, he picked it up, picked up the ball, and then it seems to be, wow, they, they, they're going to win. But next time, then Marshall started off running and running all by himself to the wrong way. 66 yards toward his own end zone. Everyone knew what was going on except him. <laughs> the announcer said, Jim Marshall is running the wrong way. He's running the wrong way. Thinks he's, sec he's scoring the touchdown. And then he went to the, um, to the end, end zone and then he threw the ball and then to try to celebrate it and nobody was around him. <laughs> And a 49er player came to Marshall and then patted him on his arm and then said, Thank you, Jim. <laughs> yeah. Then ever since his nickname, until the end of his career, his nickname was Wrong Way. We don't want it. We don't want it happens in our lives. We try hard. We do our best in our lives, and then we finish our course of life, and then we are surrounded by our loved ones, and close our eyes, and then we open our eyes, and then we realize something is wrong. We don't want it. All we pursued, all we valued was the wrong thing. We don't want it. We have to go to the right way, fixing eyes on, our eyes on Jesus not something else in the world. We have to go to the right way. What did he do? He is very, he is the best example for us, a model, and he says, yeah, he went to the wrong way. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus is always our best model, and then he endured the cross to save each one of you and me. He ran his race, and then he accomplished his salvation. And then he is our goal to reach. When you race, if you want to reach the goal, you don't give up, and because of um, you know, even though we have obstacles, we have to endure those kind of things so that we can reach to our goal. And countless God's holy people before us endured hardships, and then they have made it. Many of you also have been through a lot, but you tolerated your hardships, and I heard so many sufferings from you, what you've, done th you've been through, and then you did a great job so far. And then what you did for your race, your own race, will, be, will become a uh, legacy for the current generations and the next generations so that they, we, and I can see and follow. Our church has been blessed with so many people of faith. Most of them who built this beautiful church building passed away or moved out but some of them are still here with us. And I wanted to hear from every one of them about the story of our church history, and especially when this church building was built. But I couldn't, but I was able to interview um, some of them. So let's take a look. We joined the church April 3rd, 1955. I was probably in my senior year at, in high school. Since 1946. 36 years. The pastor asked me to come over to our house to talk and said, yeah, we decided we were going to go to the Baptist church because we had a large youth group. 
John said, uh, well, get, would you guys be interested in joining a church? And I said, I don't think so. He said, you know, they don't have a youth group. You got a big youth They got a big youth group. And he looked at me and said, would you help me build a big youth? <laughs> now, you know, <laughs> he caught me, you know. So uh, that's how we ended up coming here. And I was on the committee when we were, we just picked out the site for this one. We all stayed in the church and we all paid our tithes and we gave what we could, you know. I, there for a while, made a quilt from the raffle off and stuff to, to raise money. Fundraising, they had, the, we, we, we had the, the, we had the bazaar and we always had an election day dinner. My husband, Bob, was the uh, chairman of the building committee. We had waited so long to have a new church, and it just hardly seems possible that it's 30 years old already. We liked the design. I think everybody was happy with it. They were most generous in their giving toward it, and it, it just turned out to be a great project. Well, first, I want to say that I was recruited to be on the campaign committee, and Gail Moriarty and I teamed up together and we made house to house calls. And we explained to them what we wanted to do and how our community uh, was growing and so was the church family and so I enjoyed that very much. Bob uh, Lennon came to me as Booth's husband and said, Gil, would you consider doing the stained glass design? I said, well, I've never done that. He said, well, we'd like for you to try. I felt very honored to be asked to do that and totally surprised. I decided I wanted to do kind of a historical thing. Star of David needs stained glass window, but they're designed to read from top to bottom. This one over here after Jesus, the one on my right uh, before Jesus. So, yes, divine inspiration is right. You know, I can remember when we were in the in the youth group, we used to have, we have backwards parties where you wore everything backwards. We had more fun. You could go to somebody's house and rake their yard or wash their windows or paint their deck or do something like that. Linda Rumsey used to have the kids in the choir. I mean, the little ones, and they'd sing once a month. That was, that was kind of neat. And there was a homeless ministry started, served uh, Sunday lunch every Sunday, had a boutique which we all gathered supplies for, they called them sojourners, the people on the street. They could shop, no charge to them, and get uh, boots and socks and toilet articles, toothbrushes, candles, books. And that ministry, many of the congregation participated in. We also uh, donated and made food part of it. I get that. Uh enthusiastic about anything to do with kids. And uh, I'm feeding people too. We donate, not much, but almost to every uh, business, Lazarus table, food pantry. Food pantry. But uh, Thanksgiving dinners, probably I like a lot of things at UMW Day. You know, the and the cookie, cookies by the pound, and all the things they do raise good money to do good things. One of our mainstays in Methodist women was the election day dinner. And I think it's so popular because that's the first turkey and dressing of the season. <laughs> uh, probably the one that was closest to my heart was the ministry to incarcerated women and children. And they told about how they missed their children. And I think that lit a spark and we had our first retreat at Camp Chippewa in 1989. We had 10 women and their children from Friday at noon until Sunday at noon, and it was so successful. It was the, probably um, some of the best years of my life. It's, it's a friendly church, and I think for the most part, people get along with each other. I get amazed at looking at the congregation and see how many people, new people you have. I don't get to go anymore. Uh, I am 91 years old. 
I'm impressed with all our new people that are there. I watch it online. I think we're a welcoming church. We certainly want to be. And I hope that it goes on for another 30 years at least. And their race hard, and then we have our own race. Let us keep up. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your grace upon us. Thanks to your grace, we have hope and goal and purpose of life. Please help us so that we can run our race with faith, no matter what happens in our lives. No matter how hard it is, please help us to keep our faith. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now please open your United Methodist hymnal, page 12. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And lift up your hearts. Yeah, page 13, I'm sorry. Okay. Now let us give thanks to our Lord, our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Mir Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the, the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and fa our fathers, God of our children and all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection. You gave birth to a church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave to disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remember, remember, remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave to disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. Whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, Carolyn Hoodless, Jack Waters, John Miller. Angie Kite, Nadine Rim, now please name those who have gone before us and had influenced your faith deeply. Since we are surrounded by so goodnesses, 
strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever and ever. Amen. Now the Lord's table is open to everybody. His grace is to everybody. Please come forward and partake. Now let us give our gift to the Lord. stand as you're able and face the cross as we sing the doxology. pray. Holy God, with humility, we offer our tithes and offerings to you. May they be used to faithfully serve the mission and ministry of your holy church. Bless those who offer to you with gratitude. Fill their needs. Watch over their path every day. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Do we have any birthday boys or girls? Okay, Carl. Okay, anybody else? Set go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Carl. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Carl. Yeah, and that's your birthday party um, celebration, okay? <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah. And last Sunday, we had a trunk and treat, trunk and, treat and we had a great success. Even though it was very cold, many people came and then children were dressed up, and then I did like this. <laughs> I thought I was a phoenix, but people call me chicken. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> Let us praise our Lord through hymn number 710. We're going to sing verse 1. If you're able, please rise. As you are going forth holding this amazing goodness of Jesus Christ, may the grace of the Lord Jesus and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit keep you, equip you, inspire you, and be with you all forever and ever. Amen.
Go in peace, my brothers and sisters.